Hello, everybody. Welcome to Perio Minute. Uh, today's uh, subject matter will be mucogingival surgery, connective tissue grafts, alloderm, dermal matrix, all the latest and greatest in uh, root coverage and increase in attachment. So, what are the two goals of connective tissue grafts and mucogingival surgery? Number one, it is to increase the amount of keratinized gingiva as sort of a wall or a protective barrier uh, to further recession. Another goal, in many cases, very important goal, is to cover the roots. So we could either have, number one, the increase in keratinized gingiva as a goal, and we can have root coverage as a goal as well, or we could have uh, just the increase in attached gingiva, depending on the following. So the most important thing to consider when it comes to prognosticating the outcomes of connective tissue grafting is the Miller classification, which I think we all learned to some degree uh, in uh, dental school. And so the Miller class one, for example, uh, we have mild recession generally tends to be one to three millimeters, maybe four, but with a great deal of keratinized tissue and most importantly, no bone loss. That is very important in order to achieve the outcomes and in terms of uh, outcome expectation. If we have bone loss, as we'll discuss in a minute in a class three, we will have different expectations for outcomes than with Miller class one and two. So again, Miller class one, mild recession, the key, no bone loss. Therefore, 100% root coverage is possible, okay? So when you send a patient out to the periodontist for a gum graft and the patient comes back, there should be, in a case like this, where there is no radiographic bone loss, minimal probing depths, um, beautiful papillas filling in the embrasures, um, that expectation of 100% root coverage uh, should be the case, all right? When it comes to Miller class two, we have more involved recession. Again, could be deeper into the keratinized attachment or it could be down past the um, mucogingival junction, okay? So, in this case, can we still get 100% root coverage? Yes, we can, um, as long as there is no bone loss. Again, radiographically, you look at the crest, there is no bone loss. Uh, you could have significant recession, and yet you could end up with 100% uh, root coverage. Okay, all the way up to the CEJ, same as in class one. Moving on to class three, very important to understand that in this case, we do have bone loss and varying degrees of bone loss, either past the uh, mucogingival junction um, or just below the CEJ. Regardless, you have to join the points on the radiograph between the crests of bone, and that is what I refer to as the bloodline. Below the bloodline, we can attain any type of uh, soft tissue attachment. Above the bloodline, we cannot, okay? So 100% root coverage is not possible. Here's an example of a more sophisticated connective tissue graft. Uh, this happens to be the son of a prominent lab technician in Toronto uh, who sent me his son to do this work. Um, as you can see, this would qualify as type 1 um, recession, Miller class 1 recession, whereby we have beautiful gingiva filling in the embrasure spaces, and we have generally 2 to 3 millimeters of recession, both anterior maxilla and mandible. In such a case, should we be able to expect 100% root coverage? And the answer is absolutely. 100% root coverage is feasible. This happens to be a photo taken only six weeks after healing. And as you can see, all 
roots are covered with a nice attachment. Over a period of six months to a year with <clears throat> the healing process and creeping reattachment, we should start seeing a nice blending in of the tissues with minimal demarcation of where the soft tissue graft had healed. We can get or attain similar results uh, using alloderm or dermal matrix type of donor tissues which have been in place for 30 years plus. And um, as you can see, prior to treatment, a great deal of recession, uh, bringing on Miller class two, as you can see we're starting to push the envelope here with regards to the um, alveolar mucosa and mucogingival junction and um, nevertheless radiographically and clinically we can see nice papillas into the embrasures and we should be able to attain 100 percent root coverage as can be seen in the eight-week post-op this can also apply to implants we can perform soft tissue grafts on teeth and we can perform soft tissue grafts on implants. As you can see, gingival recession is the most common uh, dental implant complication. Happens considerably, particularly in areas where if the issue is not addressed at the time of the implant surgery, where there is insufficient keratinized gingiva or insufficient attachment levels, over time you will see this sort of thing, recession. Can we fix it? Absolutely, we can fix it and attain 100% root coverage because again, in cases like this, we have the bone there 100%. Finally, another case before, we have a couple of primary teeth. This patient was undergoing orthodontic treatment, trying to make sufficient space for implants. These primary teeth were, were then extracted Immediate implants were placed. These happen to be Straumann NC and RC implants. As you can see, we have excellent bone levels between the implants. And final restoration. The little buttons for the Invisalign are still present and then removed for the final. What can happen, again, if we have insufficient keratinized tissue is the gold margin can pop and we can see it leading to an unhappy patient but luckily because of good bone levels and good technique we're able to restore uh, the soft tissues to normal.